Hello YouTube, this is Senchi of Wolves, ready to um, conduct her reading of Twilight, Chapter 1. Um, what's Chapter 1 called? Well, we could say the preface and Chapter 1, since we're doing both. Chapter 1's called First Sight. That one! So yeah, will I pay attention to the book? Well, I paid close attention to it, so I could... Um, review it correctly. Anyway, um, I guess a disclaimer's in order. Uh, if you like Twilight in any way, shape, or form, leave. Okay, now that we've done that one, let's do this. This reading of Twilight. Um, while I read the preface, uh, mark some um, stuff up here. I just like the preface. If, the, if this preface was like a paper, she would have gotten, like a one page paper, she would have gotten an F, like for English or something, I don't know. But it, it's pretty bad. Um, tense problems, uh, questions, random commas and periods all over the place. It's pretty bad. Mm. Anyway, first sight. Um, I'll go over the stuff I've underlined. Um, it was 75 degrees in Phoenix, the sky a perfect cloudless blue. I was wearing my favorite shirt, dash, sleeveless, comma, white lace, semicolon. I was wearing it as a farewell gesture, period. My carry-on item was a parka. I wrote in the margin, might want to describe more in this. In fact, this would have been a good place to go into more depth. And then again, there was a tense problem in the next paragraph. Um, I love Phoenix. I love the sun and the blistering heat. I love the vigorous, sprawling city. And I said, describe. <clears throat> and then, of course, there's her whole, um, like, the way she just moans about forcing herself to go into forks. That whole thing is just so stupid. And, um, of course, there's her whole, my mother, I, I want to make sacrifices for my mother who always makes sacrifices for me. And I'm sitting here going, your mother makes sacrifices for you because she's your mother. Like, seriously? <clears throat> or a really good way to make a sacrifice for her is to, um, I don't know, go with your mother and follow her and her husband. But no, this is Bella. Bella doesn't do anything sensible. Bella just does things at the spur of the moment. And gets over emotional about it. Bella's like a boring drama queen. <clears throat> um, uh, it doesn't say when she gets into the terminal at all. Like, it seriously does not say when Bella got into the terminal. It just, like, into the terminal, into the airport. It just has this thing where they're driving and this Bella thought. And it, it's just so dis... Con it's all crazy. It's all stupidly put together. It doesn't describe anything except what the narrator's thinking, which is Bella. And of course, dialogue. Badly described dialogue. You have the dialogue, no description in between, which bugs me. Um, a bunch of mechanical errors, things where I just don't understand Bella's logic. Um, well, she finally meets her dad. She gets, well, you finally get to see her dad. Um, and, and apparently fishing with her father is um, a painful memory. Uh, she nicknames her truck that her dad so graciously got for her and made, made the pains to go find, to get it from his friend, which was, and get it fixed and get it to where it was running the thing. She's nicknaming it the thing. Um, and of course it's basically, it was basically free, so it's a problem for her. Free stuff. That was, that probably comes from going, from living in a big city, which I can see. 
And I bet Stephanie Meyer has a problem with it because problem with free stuff because Bella has a problem with free stuff too. Um And of course, for these lines, no need to add that my being happy in Forks is an impossibility. He didn't need to suffer along with me. And I never looked a free truck in the mouth or engine. And I was sitting here going, can't you be more grateful for the truck? <laughs> like, seriously. <clears throat> um... Um, one of the best things about Charlie is he doesn't hover. He left me alone to unpack and get settled, a feat that would have been altogether impossible for my mother. It was nice to be alone, not to have a smile, I have to smile and look pleased. A relief to stare dejectedly out and out the window at the sheeting rain and just, and let just a few tears escape. I wasn't in the mood to go on a real crying jag. I would save that for bedtime when I would have time have to think of the coming morning. Wow, miserable much? Way to make yourself miserable, Bella. You just make yourself miserable. Your mother miserable because she has to be parted from you. Your dad miserable because he has to deal with you, you being miserable. I mean, really? It's just so stupid. She complains about forks. Um, she doesn't sleep well. And she cries. Um, bunch of mechanical stuff. Um, and I wrote here, Bella is so boring that normal life cannot be described better through her eyes. And she is a pretty boring character when you get... I didn't want to be too early to school, but I couldn't stay in the house anymore. I donned my jacket, which had the feel of a biohazard suit, and headed out into the rain. Good Lord of heaven and earth. Talk about things. I mean, this book has so much stuff not happening. Oh, God, I'm holding it. <laughs> um, it's just, there's so much stuff not happening in here that it's just... The plot is slow. Normally in the first chapter, something would happen other than Edward glaring at you and you cry. Well, okay, we'll get to that later. Hang on. Um, she goes to school the next morning. Secretary. Um, meets a bunch of people. Gets um, bugged by this kid named Eric. Uh, she's not very friendly at all. I mean, one girl sat next to me in both trig and Spanish, and she walked with me to the cafeteria for lunch. She was tiny, several inches shorter than me, five feet four inches, but her wildly curly dark hair made up for a, up a lot of the height, a lot of the difference between our heights. I couldn't remember her name, so I smiled and nodded as she prattled about teachers and classes. I didn't try to keep up. She's not very friendly. She's really not very friendly. And, um... She first sees Edward and his family. Um... And she's interested in, the, in them. And the thing that she notices the most out of everything... Honestly, I mean, for me, I would think uh, they're very pale. They're paler than me. They have circles under their eyes that are worse than mine. So I would be thinking about that and the fact that they're not eating, not the fact that they're incredibly beautiful. I mean, seriously. How, how does this even... Like, Bella is, as a character is horrible. It's like beauty is all she cares about. And that's what all seems to be part of her and Edward's relationship. Yeah. And, and what I want to know is, how do people not notice that the colons don't eat and still seem to remain healthy? I mean, Dr. Colon's a doctor, right? I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't he be like, yeah, like, 
Seriously. And I'm saying a lot of likes in here, so I apologize. Um, hmm. Uh, sh Jessica whispers, which I'm trying to figure out why since the colons are so far away. And Bella doesn't say. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. The fact that the colons are adopted, I kind of think that there could have been something better said for that one. Like, I don't know, emancipated teenagers, which they could be. I mean, yeah, they would have arrived early enough for that. Um... Stephanie Meyer paints Jessica to be a bitch. Which, to be honest, I'm just kind of like, really? The only person who's friendly to Bella, does does she have to be a bitch? Really? Is that needed? Um, uh, when Bella's first um, eye contact with Edward and like how he just seems so frustrated, I would have taken that as offensive. I don't know about anyone else, but I would have been offended by the fact that um, Edward was giving me this look. And, of course, you get all that stuff. She meets Mike. Edward glares at her. She has a gripe vest. That's literally the first chapter. So, later, YouTube.